Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10, the fanged whale. The skull of an ancient predatory whale was discovered in the middle of nowhere in Peru. This deadly marine mammal lived 36 million years ago, a time when Peru's Ocucaje Desert was underwater. According to Rodolfo Salas Gismondi from the Department of Vertebrate Paleontology at the Natural History Museum in Lima, the animal was one of the biggest predators of its day. It's been nicknamed the Ocucaje Predator for how fierce it once was. Its real name is the Bacillosaurus, and it was at the top of the food chain. The creature grew to be 55 feet long and had enormous jaws filled with sharp teeth. This allowed it to take down fish, other prehistoric whales, and even apex predators like sharks. Thankfully for paleontologists today, one particular Bacillosaurus died and floated to the bottom of the ocean, where it became preserved in sediments. The Okukahe Desert is a hotbed for paleontologists who want to study these type of marine animals. Because it was once an ocean, and because it's now a flatland of a desert, it's relatively easy to dig up the bones of prehistoric monsters. Number 9. The Mystery Cave Researchers in Canada were flying a helicopter across a remote valley in British Columbia's Wells Gray Provincial Park. They were looking for caribou, which makes what they found that much more impressive. Amid the unpopulated rolling hills and rocky peaks, they came across an enormous hole in the ground. It appeared to be the entrance to a giant cave bored vertically into the surface of the Earth. No one had ever seen or heard of this before. As it turns out, these researchers may have stumbled upon the largest cave in Canada. Catherine Hickson, a local geologist, went to the site to check it out firsthand and was shocked by what she saw. The cave's mouth is 328 feet across, shrouded in mist and at least 440 feet deep. There's no official name for the cave yet. Scientists are currently working with representatives from the First Nations to see if they already have a name for it. One of the first researchers who spotted the cave called it the Sarlacc Pit, a reference to the pit in the desert Jabba the hut threw prisoners into in the Star Wars film Return of the Jedi. Sound familiar? So far, that name has stuck in the media. A change.org petition is now trying to make Sarlacc Pit the official name of the cave. As for why it's so big, researchers believe it was formed by melting ice flow, which pours into the cave and then tunnels for a mile and a half before it emerges on the other side. As of right now, nobody has been able to get all the equipment needed into such a rural area to descend into the giant hole in the ground. For all we know, it could be filled with all kinds of mysterious creatures. Number 8. The Akhtala Monastery in the north of Armenia, just a few miles from the border of Georgia, in a genuine no-man's land, is one of the most fascinating monuments to Christian history anywhere in the Caucasus. The monument is called Akhtala Monastery, and it's situated on a plateau overlooking a river. It was once hidden inside the walls of a major fortress, but that fortress has since been destroyed. The history of this monastery begins in the 10th century, 1,000 years ago. The location was perfect for a major defensive structure to help protect the Tashir Zoraget kingdom against invaders. Two centuries later, the Princess Miriam of the Kyrikian clan ordered that a church be built inside the fortress. This became the Church of the Most Holy Mother of God, and it became so popular that the fortress transformed into a monastery. In the 14th century, the building fell into the possession of the Georgian Orthodox Church. 100 years later, a small settlement was established just at the base of the monastery. It was invaded by foreigners twice, and in the 18th century, the dome of the central temple was destroyed. Shortly after, the monastery fell into ruin. After 900 years of safety, it was abandoned and left to rot. There's nobody left at the monastery, and the only people seen here are Greek pilgrims marching through the desolate landscape to mark the birth of the Virgin Mary on the 21st of September. Number 7. Rutupie. Rutupie, also known as Richborough Castle, is the ruin of an ancient Roman Saxon fort in the United Kingdom. Although nobody can agree exactly on the origins of the fortress, scholars agree it was probably the landing site for the Claudian invasion. This was the successful Roman campaign to conquer Britain in the year 43 AD, turning it into the Roman province of Britannia. At the time of the invasion, Rutupie had a large natural harbor that made it an ideal spot for the Romans. They could bring in ships, they could use them as defense, 
and could bring in supplies from mainland Europe. Once the invasion started paying off, the Romans began expanding their British Empire out in all directions from this single port. There were connections to Canterbury, Dover, Limpney, and Reculver. After some years, as the Romans pushed farther north, Rutupie became a commercial town. It was so close to Europe that the Romans imported white marble from Italy to build a massive arch over 80 feet tall. This arch was considered the gateway to Roman Britain. By the year 250 AD, things started going south. The empire was under siege from the Saxons and the Frankish invaders, and Rutupie was transformed into a military fortress. It survived up until the 5th century, when the Roman Empire completely fell apart. Then the whole place was abandoned. Today, it's a shabby ruin in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by farmland. And now for number 6. But first, want to give a big shout out to Terralyn Gunsher, who has been enjoying our compilation videos. If you love longer videos and want to see a bunch of mysterious and strange discoveries, be sure to check those out and subscribe for more videos like these. Number 6. A Prehistoric Drawing In Egypt's eastern desert, archaeologist Mahmoud Tony made a shocking discovery. He was on an expedition going through one of the largest awe-inspiring deserts in the world when he found a chunk of marble stone. This marble stone was covered in drawings that appear to be from the prehistoric era. Somebody, thousands and thousands of years ago, drew a hunting scene on a random chunk of stone. It survived in the Great Desert until now. The drawing is of a hunter. He's holding a weapon in one hand led by a pair of hunting dogs. There is some kind of enormous beast running from them. The best guess anyone has is that the huge animal was an Arabian oryx, one of the most hunted animals in prehistoric times. The discovery is fascinating because of the drawing's location in the middle of nowhere. There are no archaeological ruins and no traces of civilization, just a rock on the ground with someone's drawing on it. But it's also fascinating because it gives some insight into prehistoric times in Egyptian deserts. Thousands of years ago, the eastern desert wasn't the middle of nowhere at all. There was plenty of water, trees and plants, and the place was bustling with hunters and wild animals. Number 5. Ruins in Israel Drone footage recently helped to uncover a set of ancient ruins. The ruins were built 2200 years ago during the 3rd century BC, or what historians call the Hellenistic period. It was the Idumeans who made these mysterious structures in Israel's Shephala region, a place of low hills between the mountains and the coastal plains. After archaeologists scanned the area using their remote drones, identifying the site for the first time, they went in with their hammers and chisels to do an excavation. What they uncovered is pretty fascinating. They found two stone altars in one of the rooms, with one of the altars carved in the likeness of a bull. It was around this time that researchers realized they were standing in what was once a magnificent temple, originally held up by towering pillars. The bull was likely a god worshipped by the Idumeans. But here's the thing, nobody knows who the deity was. There are so few Idumean temples left standing that they can be counted on one hand. These people were descendants of the biblical Edomites, desert nomads who roamed into the mountainous region beyond the Dead Sea and settled there but they were crushed by Judas Maccabeus around the year 100 BC. He forced them to assimilate with the Judean population. The last Idumean vanished 2,000 years ago, and hardly anything about them has survived. That makes this temple an extraordinary discovery in the middle of a hot and grassy desert, and all thanks to new drone technology helping out archaeologists. Number 4. The Sumela Monastery The Sumela Monastery is located high up in the Mela Mountains of Turkey an ancient Greek Orthodox monastery dedicated to the Virgin Mary. It was built in the 4th century and is one of the most isolated, oldest, and mysterious monasteries in the world. It's amazing because the monastery isn't even located in a Christian country anymore. Turkey has long been a majority Muslim nation, and it shows just how much things change over the centuries. The monastery faces the Altindere Valley in the Trabzon province, and its origins are unclear. One story says the monastery was founded by a pair of priests from Athens during the reign of the Roman Emperor Theodosius I. This was around the year 375 AD. It remained a remote Christian outpost up until around the 13th century, when it received riches from the Empire of Trabzon, established in the region in 1204 AD. The monastery became even richer in the 18th century under the Ottoman Empire. 
In modern times, it became even more splendid. Larger buildings were installed, magnificent decorations were brought in, and gifts were sent from Greek Orthodox communities all across Turkey. It was in the 19th century that foreigners began to visit the majestic monastery, standing nearly 4,000 feet above sea level. In 1923, the monastery was deserted following the forced population exchange between Greece and Turkey. Then, in 1930, a terrible fire burned through the monastery and caused major destruction. All wooden parts of the structure were destroyed. Today, the monastery is a rare historical building in the middle of a barren, mountainous region. Number 3. Jug in a Cave An American-Israeli named Roddy Brown, currently living in Israel, discovered an artifact from 5,000 years ago totally by accident. He had gone for a hike with his friends near the Dead Sea when they decided to climb into a remote cave for fun. The cave is known as Cave 53, and it was the site of an archaeological dig a few years ago in 2017 by researchers with the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. The dig revealed pieces of jars, very old olive seeds, and even some scraps from an ancient scroll. Everyone was quite surprised that so many artifacts had been found, considering there had already been a previous excavation 30 years before that. The original excavations three decades ago had revealed pieces of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Nonetheless, Brown and his friends went to check out the isolated cave. Without even trying, they came across a fully intact jug. That may seem kind of boring, a plain old jug made from some kind of clay, but it's 5,000 years old. Somebody, thousands of years before Judaism was even a thing, before the Roman Empire, and before the Dead Sea Scrolls were written. Someone left a jug inside this cave. Finding such an artifact is like reaching directly into the past. Number 2. Ancient Boomerangs If there's one thing synonymous with Australia other than kangaroos, it's got to be the boomerang. But what a lot of people don't realize is that boomerangs are actually ancient and go back thousands of years. Just recently, a pair of employees with the National Parks and Wildlife Service came across a small collection of boomerangs in a dry creek bed near Cooper Creek. If you know anything about Australia, you'll know this is about as middle of nowhere as it gets, apparently, because I've never been. The workers discovered four boomerangs, though not like any boomerang you've ever seen. These were non-returning boomerangs, meaning they could be thrown, but they wouldn't boomerang back. They were taken to a laboratory to be analyzed by researchers with the Australian Heritage Services. The artifacts came from between 1650 and 1830, only a few centuries ago. Now this has created something of a mystery. According to archaeologists, boomerangs go back at least 10,000 years, but these are much newer. What researchers are trying to figure out is why they were made not to return. What was the point of a boomerang that didn't come back to a person after it was thrown? Researchers believe they could have been used for fighting, perhaps for digging, or maybe even in some strange and long forgotten ritual. Number 1. Tash Rabat Tash Rabat is one of the most isolated, middle-of-nowhere places ever. It's an ancient trading post located in Kyrgyzstan. Hundreds of years ago, the isolation of Tash Rabat made it a very popular destination for caravans traveling along the Silk Road. As you may know already, groups of traders, merchants, and travelers wandered along the Silk Road from China to the Middle East and then into Europe. To accommodate the explosion of travelers in the Middle Ages, outposts cropped up in many places. The more isolated the outpost, the more likely caravans were to stop and rest. Tashrabat was built in the 15th century of pure stone at an altitude of over 11,400 feet. It's located in a snowy mountainous region near the Torugard Pass. To the north is another ruined fortress that almost nobody knows anything about. And other than that, there's nothing at all in the area. The ruins themselves consist of 31 rooms, each one in the shape of a dome, once used for accommodating traveling merchants. The truth is that very little is known about how Tash Rabat came to be. One legend says it was built by a father and son, and that the son fell in love with a traveling girl and abandoned his father. But that's probably just a myth. Nobody knows when the place was finally abandoned for good, but it probably happened slowly as the Silk Road became irrelevant in more modern times. These days, visitors to Tash Rabat have to be careful of altitude sickness since it's basically at the top of a mountain. Thanks for watching! What's your favorite ancient site in the middle of nowhere? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already! See you later! Bye!